keyboards, blurbs, greetings, and things. Got this here to talk about. A box just arrived from Unicomp, the keyboard manufacturers in Kentucky doing the Model M's and whatnot. Uh, yeah, they've got a new one that I bought, and here it is. I don't know if it says... Nah, it didn't exactly say. It does say it was made on April 1st. Hopefully this is not an April Fool's joke. <laughs> it's supposed to be their new SSK, or really, I guess their first SSK. They've done various computer keyboard configurations over the years for a long time, but never an SSK to my knowledge. This is their take on it. So, I'm going to take a look at it. So yeah, there's the uh, variant that they got. I guess they're calling it the Mini M. But yeah, it's an 87 key keyboard, USB. And this is, I believe, based on their new Model M product, which uh, if you saw my blurb a while back about the just regular Unicomp Model M, that was based on like the old tooling and molding and such that they've been using since the IBM Lexmark days. They do have a new Model M, I've never tried that, that's supposedly a little, you know, better made, uh, tighter construction, uh, things that could definitely have been... I, yeah, I was just slightly disappointed with the Unicomp Model M that I got because of that. Like, the plastic just felt weirdly not great, like, there, there were a lot of imperfections, it was very light and kind of cheap feeling, and some of the keys weren't quite lining up right, there was a lot of give in them and stuff, so... The classic is what I had before. So then there was the new one, and then now there's this, the new new one, which is an SSK kind of variant, which is really exciting. I love the SSK keyboards from IBM. Got a couple of them, bolt-mounted uh, bolt ones. So I have to compare it to that. I don't remember the exact price. Uh, yeah, it's not listed on my paperwork. But compared to like a real SSK, Really darned affordable. Oh man, that looks awesome. Mm. Nice. Dude, that is, yeah, feeling excellent already. It does have the same kind of telltale, like, cheap kind of feeling plastic that the other Unicomp had. But, it does feel nice and, nice and heavy, actually. It's got, it's got, more heft than the classic Model M from them. And that was another thing I was disappointed with. It just moved around like way too easily on my desk. It needed, you know, a, a big metal plate or something in the back or something just to hold it down. It felt so lightweight. Uh, so you can get your standard little thing here. <laughs> Buckling spring keys, there are issues. Space bar, double strike characters, yeah. It's the standard stuff. It's like that on any buckling spring keyboard, new or old. Uh, the Model F keyboard, I got the new Model F, not from Unicomp, but yeah, the Model F keyboard, that had a dislodged, or like a stuck space bar, and some of the other keys weren't buckling quite correctly, but these... <laughs> Literally every one of them feels good. Even the ones that are like got stabilizers, I'm assuming. Some kind of like bar underneath there. Yeah, I could see the bar under space. But yeah, I, I, I just, I really like the look of this one in black with the uh, two kinds of gray. I think it's, well, no, I guess it's all the same gray, isn't it? I was thinking that these, one, well, they're like, it's a slightly different kind of gray, maybe. Is that just me? I, f I feel like these... Those are all like slightly darker gray. It's hard to tell in this lighting. Anyway, I like the way that this one looked. And uh, the fact that it has LEDs here for your indicators for num caps and scroll lock is neat. The original SSK does not have that. Of course, it does have Windows keys and a little right mouse button menu there. So that's, that's different compared to an original SSK. And a removable USB. Uh, connector there. Pretty neat. So here we go. Look at that. Now oh, those feel better too. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> like there's just so many little things like these on the uh, their classic Model M that just I wasn't happy with. They felt weird and kind of cheap and like 
the one leg was always looser and it felt like it wasn't quite in there right because the plastic was warped. I gotta admit, that's pretty ugly, but you're not gonna be looking at the bottom of it too much, right? <laughs> Let me bring out the uh, my original SSK here real quick. Yeah, look at that. So it is notably smaller. That's interesting. All the keys are about the same size. Of course, the pay, uh, space bar is smaller because we've got more keys jammed in there <laughs> that I could personally do without for my workflow, but that's okay. Um, you know, extra keys, you can always remap them to something else if you really want to. Uh, but yeah, it looks like they have made it a little smaller than I was expecting. That's pretty cool. Huh. I wish the num lock thing was like over here instead of right here. Feels like it should be off to the right. That's very much like an SSK though. Of course, there's no little speaker thingy, but it's not like that's used on this SSK anyway. Uh, I have put little bumpers on mine. I'll probably do the same for here because I usually use it without the legs up and uh, the bumpers just help it not slide around. These are just like things that you put on back on uh, the backs of picture frames or cabinets or whatever. And of course that had uh, the SDL connector there. I wish that they offered this one in, in that instead of USB only, because I would like to use this on retro systems as well as modern. Um, but yeah, I'll try it with like a USB to PS2 converter. Actually, you know what? I'm not sure if I can even test that because mine broke. Huh. I'll have to get another one. Well, whatever. I'm gonna be testing this for a week or two anyway uh, from as the moment I'm recording this and the next bit you're about to see here in a few seconds will be a week or two later because I like testing these keyboards <laughs> as my main keyboard for a bit and then reporting back. But yeah, I gotta say, <laughs> first impressions are really good for the price. Uh, yeah, this this is awesome. I'm even more intrigued by their uh, like full-sized new Model M's now because this is like a notable update in quality. Like the you know even the printing on the letters looks much sharper than on my Unicomp Model M that I got. Like look at that. And even got the legends right there for the numpad area. <laughs> this is exciting. Oh, yeah, see you in a week or two. Mm, greetings again. Second half of this blurb. Yeah, it's been a couple weeks. I, well, almost two weeks. Mm, 13, 12 days, something like that. Since I got this keyboard, I was planning on doing a follow-up just a week later, but I uh, kind of forgot about it. And honestly, that's about the best compliment I can give it because I have been using it every day for everything that I do on this desktop and uh, <clears throat> it's just kind of blended into the background. And that's seriously, that, that's a high compliment for any modern keyboard. It is exactly what it needs to be. It is a smaller version of a Model M and it's new and affordable relative to the old ones, the SSKs, man. I don't even know what they're going for anymore. I know even when I got mine several years ago, they weren't cheap. Um, let's see here. Just just looking at the current prices of SSKs. And the most recent SSK that sold was $450. <laughs> There's nothing special about it. Has this one even been modded? Uh, here's a parts unit that sold for $194. Doesn't work. Um, no, so not even bolt modded. One of these things, an original one, is around $400, $450. Hence the reason that I am so excited about this product and uh, the fact that it just daggum works and it feels good enough to blend into the background and work perfectly fine as, you know, your everyday keyboard. It's solidly in place, you know, it's small enough without being too small, at least for me. Yeah, like there's a lot of other little things that I've come to really appreciate about it. Like for instance, th that USB cable that's back here, 
I was uh, intrigued at first that it was you know, your standard like USB-A, right? It's just USB. So it's like an A to A cable, the same connection to either side. But the fact that it's so substantial is quite nice. It holds in there very nicely. It's much more firm and in place than uh, like a lot of my USB-C, like USB 3 type Cs. And um, of course, USB micro, it's a million times better than that. So yeah, that's nice and solidly in place. Uh, I, I did actually end up, um, I still don't use the feet, but I did put the little rubber bumpers like I said I was going to do. That's the same thing that I've done in my original SSKs, works nicely. It doesn't feel as solid though, not even close <laughs> to my other Model M's, my, my IBM ones. There is just, let me get some open so I'm done. Yeah, it doesn't have the same thunky downness. Like the, the bottoming out doesn't feel the same at all. And uh, like if you're not used to those, then it's, it's totally fine. If you are used to it, it just takes about a day or two and then I uh, acclimated to this one. And it was great. Uh, like I said, it's just blended in the background and had no real complaints. I like it a lot. Something that I do have a complaint about though, for sure, and the other things have just been like slight little, eh, you gotta live with it kind of things. And that is this being blue. Why is it absolutely ridiculous glowing blue LEDs? I don't like that. I do like the fact that there are indicators here. I wish it were right, you know, uh, over here on the right instead of kind of off to the side. Like it's just a weird spot for it right above the USB cable area. I don't know why it's there, but yeah, the fact that they're blue. So what I was thinking about doing what I was going to do was replace the LEDs with uh, another color, green or amber perhaps. But I opened it up and check this out. It's these little teeny little LEDs completely inside of whatever this film is. <laughs> so it's not a traditional kind of uh, LED that you can just swap out. I was just going to solder in some other ones and um, I don't see any way to do that here, not without just needing more tools or different kind of tools than I have. So, uh, yeah, that's a thing. I really wish that those were replaceable, or at least they offered some other colors other than bright blue. I just don't like bright blue on anything. Green, fine, amber, that'd be really cool, actually. I think amber, kind of orange on black would be great, but can't do it. I don't know. Something else I wanted to mention. I don't remember what. Hmm. Ah, needed coffee. That's what it was. So I remembered what it was uh, that I was gonna say. When I opened it up, I noticed that it uses the same exact plastic rivets that are just kind of melted in place as you would get on older IBM Model M's. I guess all of them, really. And uh, that kind of sucks because those are gonna go bad after a while, but you know what? It's what IBM did, <laughs> so I can't really blame Unicomp at all for it. It's just something to keep in mind that eventually those will break and they're gonna fall out and it's gonna get crappy. And you're gonna you know, probably want to bolt mod your Unicomp just like you would any other. And that's what bolt modding is. You just put bolts through there instead of relying on those plastic rivets. Other than that though, I mean, the construction inside is about what I expected. You got that one metal plate in the back. Um, the whole key thing here, <laughs> the whole assembly has got that plastic backing. And then of course, the outer shell is kind of a thinner, not so great plastic. In fact, that's probably my biggest yeah, I wish it was better kind of situation. It's just the overall plastics themselves of the keyboard housing. It's better, I think, than my other Unicomp, but like it just looks cheap. I don't know, like it's got these really sharp edges right there that it's just not, and like on the front, the whole thing just feels not great for $121. I have keyboards that are like $60 from Keychron and whatnot that feels so much better than this. And it's crazy how much better the plastics and tooling have gotten um, for affordable prices. If you're doing things, I guess, at a factory that allows that, I suppose theirs doesn't or their process doesn't or their plastics don't. It's just not what this is though. And I just got to accept that. But yeah, like compared to this, this is just the, the classic Model M that I got from Unicomp. I mean, look at that. Like the, the the things were wrong there. It's like all bent and like doesn't hold in place right. It's all squeaky. There's like pieces coming apart inside now after using it for a month or something. Uh, the whole thing just has this ridiculous like flexing to it. It feels way worse. The keys, a lot of them are even more 
jangly around and uh, there were so many just trade-offs you know that the fact that it has the, the cable integrated in there and you can't swap it out or anything oh yeah that was another thing the fact that this is USB only that kind of sucks too because I do wish that I could easily use this in even older computers I can use this in pretty much Windows 95 and forward so long as the computer has USB but uh, if it doesn't have USB or just you know PS2 or AT so I can convert PS2 to AT I would love to use this on a bunch of older computers that I have like the one right next to me but I can't and I tried some of my uh, my USB to PS2 boxes this one is the KV USB PS2 black box works on some keyboards doesn't work on this one so yeah, that's a thing uh yeah final thoughts it's a good keyboard really good if you want an ssk and uh you're okay with the minor trade-offs here and there and the slightly lower build quality than you might expect if you're used to hundred dollar plus mechanical keyboards then um yeah this might be a slight disappointment but if you want the buckling spring feel and the ssk form factor and you don't mind black on gray <laughs> then and you know all the other things that i've mentioned then this is just a fantastic board let me just double check again i'm gonna look on their website and see if i missed anything yeah it comes with black and white and gray keys or just black with gray which is what these are they're all the same color or they're supposed to be anyway i still think that these look slightly darker but uh, yeah, there's also a, a version with like notably darker keys, but that's it. They don't have like your, your classic IBM color version and kind of the, the beige off-white that IBM used. I wish that was an option. That would be cool. Why don't they do that? Like that seems like an obvious thing, especially I suppose I, if they offered a PS2 version of it, but they don't. So yeah, weighs six pounds. It's a pretty beefy thing for the size. Like I said, it blended into the background. And I'm going to continue using it because it's real good. Thanks for watching.